welcome to the show where we share the stories of the many who intersect with our healthcare system but are rarely heard from. My name is Kevin Poe, founder and editor of Kevin MD. Today in the show, we have John Stilson. He is a medical student and he's also the CEO of a cryptocurrency investment management company. And he wrote the Kevin MD article, Alternative Cryptocurrencies, Five Tips for Physicians. John, welcome to the show. Thanks, Kevin. I appreciate you having me on. We'll get into your article in a little bit, but first off, can you share your story and journey to where you are today? Yeah, of course. So I'm from rural Northern Indiana originally, grew up there. My dad's a family doc up there, calls himself a country doc, does OB, the whole kind of traditional family medicine where you kind of do it all. So that's what I grew up around. I went to the University of Alabama for undergrad, really enjoyed down, going down there, watched some good football, saw a couple national championships, got to throw a roll tied in for the, any Alabama fans listening, and then came back up to Indiana for medical school. So I'm currently going to IU School of Medicine in my fourth year there. And back when I was in college though at Alabama, I had gotten a scholarship there. And so the money that I'd saved for college, I wasn't having to pay for my school with. And so I kind of had some spare cash. And so I decided to start investing and I did a little bit of stock investing, but then really got interested in cryptocurrency. And so started doing some investing back then with that money and grew it over time, went through a really uh, rough crypto bear market right after I started getting into it. But kind of held throughout, kind of had a strategy that I used and continued to watch it and do research. And back then I had thoughts of starting a company, but felt I didn't have enough experience and I was probably right. And so as things have kind of gotten interesting in the cryptocurrency market over the last two years, this past fall going into January, I started thinking about maybe I should start a company because I think there's a lot of people who are interested in cryptocurrency, but they don't really understand it. And maybe they don't even want to understand it, but they're interested in the opportunity to grow their uh, personal wealth and provide financial freedom for themselves and their family. And so I wanted to start this fund through that. It's a family company. It's run by myself and my business partner is my cousin and he's the CFO. He has the more traditional financial background. And so with all that, we started the process back in the spring and uh, it was a long process of getting the right lawyers. We wanted to create a really good framework for success. And so we got some uh, really solid lawyers out of Chicago and got an accounting firm on board and drafted the paperwork. And if you've dealt with real estate or real estate groups, you might've heard of a PPM. Mm -hmm. It's called a private placement mem memorandum. And that's the structure that we use for a fund, which is what allowed us to create a fund, even though we're not financial advisors, by doing it through a PPM structure. And so... We've just been in the process of gaining investors and getting our quarterly statements rolling, starting to kind of get a track record under ourselves. And so we're continuing to bring on investors and meet with people and grow ourselves, um, start doing more marketing and branding. So pretty exciting. So how do you balance the two? So you're in your fourth year of medical school, of course, very busy going for residency interviews. You're balancing that as well as being a CEO of a, a cryptocurrency investment company. How do you balance those two passions? Yeah, I think it's just, I really enjoy both of them. So I, when I'm doing medicine, I do, I'm hundred percent all in. So that way when I'm uh, needing to study or when I'm in the clinic, that's what I'm focused on. But then when I'm out, I'm able to separate my time so that when I'm working on crypto and working on my company business, I'm able to maximize the time. I don't really waste any minutes during my day. I work during lunch and I don't really consider it work, especially on the crypto side, because it's just something I'm very passionate about. And I really enjoy because it was originally a hobby mm -hmm. and turned into a company. And so, yeah, it's just that time management. My wife is very supportive and that goes a long way. She's busy as well, but we make sure in the midst of all of it that we prioritize time for each other because that's also important to have a good support system in the midst of, midst of the busy times of residency interviews and all the craziness that can go on fourth year med school. All right, let's transition now to your Kevin MD article titled Alternative Cryptocurrencies, Five Tips for Physicians. We've had a couple of cryptocurrency theme podcast episodes, and I always like to start off with this question before you get into your article. Why should physicians care about cryptocurrency? Yeah, I think that one of the reasons you should care is because it's a unique opportunity to diversify into an emerging asset class. And there's a few reasons that that should matter for you. One, if you're, if you're a physician, if you're anyone, you should be investing. You should be growing your wealth for the future to set yourself up to have autonomy and to protect yourself and your family. You know, most people usually have, in the past have done that through stocks and real estate, but this is kind of a new market and it's interesting because it's global. It makes sense that in the 
the more globalized world and an internet-based economy that you would start to have more asset classes that are sort of internet-based and more global. And, and so adding that to your portfolio can really help potentially give you some increased returns, but also increased volatility. There's a lot of risk with it. And so I think having a small percentage is beneficial. Uh, also, it's continuing to grow as a portion of market a global market cap. So the amount, the global amount of wealth in the world is about 440 trillion, give or take. And cryptocurrency today is about $2.5 trillion, which is a half percent, one half of a percentage point of global wealth. And that's not insignificant um, in the grand scheme of things. And you don't capture that in your traditional funds that you would invest in a mutual fund and things like that. And so I think that's one of the reasons I think it's going to continue to grow. And if you aren't directly investing in it through either a cryptocurrency fund, like I'm doing or doing it yourself, then you're missing out on some of those growth opportunities you could have in your portfolio. So even within cryptocurrency, there are various asset classes within that most equate cryptocurrency with Bitcoin, but of course there's other classes as well, like Ethereum and micro cap cryptocurrencies. There's a very variety of meme coins that's currently um, in the news now, but you talk about alternative cryptocurrencies, five tips for physicians. Now, for those who didn't get a chance to read your article, can you just walk my audience through it and share the story of why you decided to write it? Yeah. So I guess the original reason I decided to write it, so my, like I said, my dad's a physician and he doesn't really know anything about crypto and, but he's someone who's always interested in learning about new technology. I think a lot of physicians are physicians are always learning and uh, especially in the medical field, but also just in general, always taking in information and about what's going on in the world. I often see physicians on the cutting edge of technology, getting a new phone or the, you know, different things that are coming out and trying them out. And so it only makes sense. Crypto would be a next step. However, it's kind of a confusing field given the specific vocabulary that it has. It's kind of a nuanced vocabulary that you don't see in your everyday life. And so I just wanted to provide some tips for physicians to sort of slowly start to learn how to evaluate cryptocurrencies for themselves, kind of the way that I did. And so that's why I did five tips. So my five tips were use case. And I think that's pretty important. So what does the crypto do? What is the value that it's providing to the world? To what, what's the roadmap? So companies can make promises, but what is their plan for getting there? I think these are just normal things you think of in, for any company. And when I think of a cryptocurrency, I think of a company. And that's kind of the way you should evaluate them. It's a little bit different, but also kind of the same. My third point, Who's working on the project? So who's on the team? Do they have experience? Do they have good leadership? Being the CEO of a startup, I know that it's not all about necessarily having 20 years of, of, of a track record. Sometimes it's just about being ambitious and confident, working hard. And so I think looking into who are the team members and what are they doing? Are they active? I think goes a long way towards success because there's some cryptocurrencies. There's a lot of cryptocurrencies that are schemes. So it's important to evaluate who are you going to be essentially working with? Who's going to be working for you if you own that coin? My fourth point is look and see if there's uh, copycats of a certain coin or a certain idea, mm -hmm. because usually in my opinion, that's a good thing. That means that it's a good idea and people are trying to innovate. And to me, when there's a lot of competition in a field from copycats out of that usually rises one or two that are better than the others. And they've had to fight sort of survival of the fittest in order to be the best. Um, I think that's beneficial if you can figure out who those are. And then what's the community like crypto is all about community. Ultimately, that's where it started with some grassroots people who were confident in the future of it. And now there's thousands and thousands of coins that you can look at, but I want to see, is there an active community? Are people talking about it? Are people excited about it? Or is there not really much talk? Are you not, see, are there not really many Twitter posts? Are there not many blog posts? Or is the team engaging with the community? All that kind of stuff is important. So I think those five things are a good foundational five to just look at the basics of a coin and what they're doing to see if it's something you'd be interested in if you think it has upside as an investment. In my private physician Facebook groups, crypto has of, of course been in the news and, you know, over the last few weeks, something like Shiba Inu, right? That's it's kind of dominating the headlines, you know, thousand percent over the last few weeks. So if I'm a physician who knows nothing about crypto and I see something like Shiba Inu goes up, you know, thousands of percent over the past week and I say, hey, I want to get into this where do I start? And what, what's your advice for that physician who, who just reads that headline? Yeah. So I think educating yourself is important, but you need to know what you're putting money into. Just like any investment, if you're trying to pick stocks, you're trying to pick a, a house that you want to purchase to rent out or to flip, 
need to know what you're getting yourself into. What's the market like? What's the value they're actually providing? Chiba Inu, for example, seems like has great community. So that was one of the five points I talked about, great community. But what is it actually providing to the world? It's kind of questionable what sort of value it'll provide over a longer time frame. And so, yeah, I think educating yourself is important and educating yourself with reliable sources, whether that's someone who has more experience, whether that's a cryptocurrency expert. I educate myself by following and listening to people who I consider experts in the field so that I can constantly be learning because I don't claim to know any, you know, everything out there. There's so much innovation happening, uh, but that's, that's kind of the groundwork. And where can clinicians buy crypto? Yeah, so there's tons of options. I... My personal preferences would be Coinbase and Voyager. Uh, Coinbase and Voyager are both US-based crypto exchanges. You can pretty easily link your bank account. They're uh, safe, reliable. They're, they're registered with the federal government and kind of run like regular businesses. And so you can have a lot more confidence in them than maybe some of the other ones who over the years have had other problems. And then if you want to really get into it, there's decentralized exchanges that you can use where you don't go through a centralized entity like a Coinbase or a Voyager, but instead you deal almost more in a peer-to-peer -peer manner where I'm, you know, giving you whatever Bitcoin and you're giving me dollars mm -hmm. online. For those physicians who want to buy crypto in their regular brokerage accounts, um, there are exchange traded funds, of course, that recently mm -hmm. has been in the news. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think it's best to hold the actual Bitcoin or the actual cryptocurrency rather than having someone else hold it for you in that circumstance, because it's kind of a distant entity you don't have a relationship with. So it's better to hold it yourself. But if you are going to invest into a fund like that, I would recommend investing in one that actually holds the physical, the you know digital physical Bitcoin rather than investing into futures and things like that, which are kind of the basis of the current, of the current ETFs that I've seen approved so far. I know that there's one that has the physical Bitcoin that's trying to transition into a ETF. And I think that would be the one that I would prefer over the others. And when you say that we can research the story behind the various alternative cryptocurrencies, just like you would a company, where can a clinician find that research? Yeah. So there's two websites that I primarily use as just a very basic aggregator of information. That's one called Coin Gecko and Coin Market Cap, and those are not the end all be all of education. They can be wrong, but they have good summaries about what a crypto is about, and they usually have links to that cryptocurrency's social media sites, their website, where then you can actually go to the websites and see what the team for that cryptocurrency, what they're saying, what their plans are what they're saying the use case of the coin is rather than going through like a third party opinion, you can go straight to the source where, you know, the chain link team is saying, this is what we're doing. This is our plan. This is who we're talking with. We partnered with this company and really get reliable information that way. And just to give us a frame of reference, what's the historical returns of crypto compared to say the S and P 500? I think that is hard to say specifically because there's so many cryptos out there. It's significantly more. I mean, Bitcoin is, from its inception is, you know, a million percent or something crazy like that. If you had bought in immediately when it was first created, then there's all sorts of other coins out there that compared to the S&P also outperform. I mean, even during this past year, say from, I've been tracking since January, cryptocurrency, the total, if you just took a, what would I call it? Like a aggregate, the entire crypto market compared to the S&P, it's outperformed the S&P over the past year or over the past what are we, 10 months, 10 months of this year. Yeah, so it's pretty significant upside compared to your traditional stock markets, but also a lot riskier, a lot more volatile. I mean, it, can, it drops 20% in a day and it goes up 30% the next day. And so that's kind of the risk you have to bear. And that's the benefit of like the fund that I'm doing. If you invest into the fund, then you don't necessarily need to watch that every day because you know someone's doing that for you and someone who has done the research, has experience doing the research and investing into various coins. Some of the criticisms of crypto that has been in the mainstream media, of course, is the environmental impact, specifically of Bitcoin. So mm -hmm. what is your comments to those who criticize the environmental impact of Bitcoin? Yeah, I think that the environmental impact is not completely unfounded. However, I would be more of an advocate to say that it provides an opportunity for innovation. I think that for one, if you have, if electricity is expensive, 
and which it can be potentially with fossil fuels and whatnot over longer periods of time, then the value of the Bitcoin that you're mining becomes less because it's an energy intensive production process. But that kind of incentivizes the people who are mining it to use sources that can produce energy over long periods of time with a decreasing cost of that over time. So solar, wind, so you have the cost up front, but then over time, you're not continually paying out, right? Because you're having to buy coal or gas in order to fuel a plant in order to produce electricity. So I think over the long run, it's actually going to create innovations in energy production. I don't think there's a problem with energy. It's okay to use energy. And I think as the world continues to grow, there's going to be more energy uses, usage. But if it's being used in a waste minimized manner, in a way that's more sustainable and renewable, I think that's the long run win. And it's not something that's going to happen overnight. I think Bitcoin might produce some faster innovation or result. For example, like I've seen like some uh, places where they will usually just blow off gas or burn it as waste. They're actually connecting burned off gas and waste and producing it into Bitcoin mining and turning it into energy that otherwise would have been, wouldn't have been used for anything, but now it's being turned into a productive asset. So I don't think that arguments are unfounded, but I think that over time it actually is going to be beneficial for environmental purposes. We're talking to John Stilson. He's a medical student, and he's also the CEO of a cryptocurrency investment management company. He wrote the Kevin MD article, Alternative Cryptocurrencies, Five Tips for Physicians. John, what are some of your take-home messages that you want to leave with the Kevin MD audience? One, I think if you're interested in cryptocurrency, just get your feet wet. It's really easy to get a Coinbase account or Voyager account, and you can transfer your from your bank or your credit card. I'd recommend using your bank, though, and just... Whatever an appropriate amount is for you, that's small, $50, and just buy some cryptocurrency and you'll see how relatively easy it is. And once you do that, it's yet to be cautious because it's easy to, to want to jump in feet first. So you should also have in mind what percent of your net worth are you willing to put into it and set a hard bar of like, I'm not going to put any more than that into it. But I think you should be willing to try it out and see what it's about, do some transactions, and then also just... Uh, continue to educate yourself just like you would anything else in the world you educate yourself on medicine politics educate yourself on whatever new sport your kids playing that you've never played before educate yourself on cryptocurrency i think it's the future of technology and that's it's worth looking into and how could people reach you yeah people can reach me through our email that's managers at investacf.com they can also go to our website investacf.com or they can uh, call our business phone number, which is 574-780-8906. And we would love to talk to anyone, um, hear from anyone. John, thanks for sharing your time and insight. And thanks again for being on the show. Thank you.